Gasoline prices in the U.S. are now about $3 a gallon. That's the environment as the first mass-produced all-electric car goes to market next month. Nissan's LEAF. The LEAF is the starting point as well for our new collaboration with Planet Forward, solving energy and climate challenges. And those challenges will be shaped by you, our viewers. Frank Sesno is an award-winning journalist. He's also a professor at the George Washington University, where he leads the Planet Forward Project, and he joins us tonight from Washington, D.C. Frank, welcome to Nightly Business Report. Well, it's great to be here, Tom, and great to be focusing like this on invention and innovation. Lots to talk about here, and let's yeah. begin with the Nissan LEAF. Lots of buzz here going on. What, uh, tell us about the car and what drivers think of it. Sure. Well, Tom, it's, it's got people thinking. That is for sure. And, you know, um, the purpose at Planet Forward is to hear from scientists, students, advocates, entrepreneurs, and experts as they make their case for energy innovation. Well, this car clearly has some folks considering whether it's time to turn over a new leaf. The commercial is slick. The message is clear. If you buy the Nissan Leaf, you'll not only save polar bears, you'll be saving the planet. But will this car gain traction? At Planet Forward, we're asking people to send innovative ideas that can affect our energy future. And this new set of wheels, which will be in showrooms in December, has drawn considerable attention. What you're looking at is our production-ready, pure zero-emission vehicle. Dan Gray uploaded a video to Planet Forward after talking to a company rep at the DC Auto Show. And because of his video, Planet Forward went to test drive the LEAF. So as you accelerate, you can see your power meter increase. What makes the Nissan LEAF unique? There's no internal combustion engine. That means zero emissions. There are all kinds of apps so you can monitor the car and its performance. And the biggest deal of all, you get up to 100 miles on a charge, Nissan says. And that is a significant leap in battery technology. So the battery's underneath the seats, so it starts at the front of the front seat right here, mm -hmm. and it goes to the back of the back seats. And the battery is composed of cells, modules, so you have four cells in a module, 48 modules make up the pack. So you have 196 individual cells in this battery pack. What is it in this battery that's different? What kind of yeah. progress do we see? We're the first manufacturer to put lithium ion in a vehicle. So this, ba this generation battery, the change is it's a different chemistry. So we go from lithium ion cobalt to lithium ion manganese, and we switch from a cylindrical cell battery to a laminate cell battery. And what that gives us is twice the energy density in about half of the package size. Nissan estimates driving this car will cost about two and a half cents a mile, compared to 12 to 14 cents a mile for a gasoline powered car. Are you saying that this is going to put the internal combustion engine out of business? I think it's going to give it a run for its money. Well, I think it's a hugely important paradigm shift. Dan Indiviglio has been writing about electric cars for the Atlantic Monthly, but he knows full well that the LEAF costs about $25,000, thousands more than similar sized cars, even with the $7,500 tax credit. And it takes hours to charge to go those 100 miles. If electricity prices stay relatively low, the, and gas prices rise a lot, then the LEAF becomes obviously a lot more attractive. These cars are really going to be attractive to this sort of the green yuppie type, right? The, the type of person who really cares a lot about the environment and has money to spend on an expensive car because these cars are relatively expensive. So do you buy an electric car even though it costs more than gas burning economy cars? Is it an innovation whose time has finally come? Planet Forward member Dan Gray says, just maybe. I just got back from driving the Nissan LEAF for the first time, and you know what? It's a real car, real smooth, real quiet. A lot of folks doubt electric cars, but in the right situation, if you commute less than 100 miles a day, tough to beat. The car has certainly generated a lot of buzz, and Dan's video has drawn a number of comments. The world will change when this car is released, says one. When you buy a really efficient hybrid or electric vehicle, you're putting money into the future of the technology, says another. Dan's response is he'd love to have a Nissan LEAF, but would never want to fuel it with coal. Well, why coal? Coal because where the electricity comes from actually matters if you're counting carbon. And we're going to need charging stations. People are going to need to be willing to adapt. So there are a lot of obstacles, Tom to this vehicle becoming truly marketable. Nonetheless, it's a gateway technology, it's a beginning technology, and as we saw with those batteries, that's in many ways the most important thing to take a look at. This is a significant leap in battery technology. How was it to drive? <laughs> 
ah, it is fun. You know, <laughs> that's what Dan said. It's, you know, the thing about when you drive electric cars, and if you've ever driven a golf cart, presumably you don't go 60 miles an hour with it, but you touch that, that pedal and you go right off. It's got total pickup. There's mm -hmm. no kind of rumble and delay. It's very nimble. And of course, it's totally silent, so that takes a little getting. All right. Well, let's talk about cost here, Frank, because we we mentioned a little bit the difference between electricity and gasoline cost per mile. But does the Leaf pay for itself? Well, this is, of course, where the rubber meets the road, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it's sort of about dollars and cents. And no, it doesn't pay for itself. It is not for those who are looking for bargains. We did some math, and if you take a look at what you actually pay for the Nissan Leaf, even with that uh, government tax credit, you pay about. $25,000 or so even with that credit. Now compare that to the Ford Focus, a comparable small car, a gasoline jet, lean engine, that's going to cost you about 16 grand. So the difference there about um, $8,600. Take that $8,600, buy enough gasoline for the Ford Focus, you'll be able to drive more than 100,000 miles. So bottom line, dollars and cents, not there yet. A significant difference. As we mentioned, we are beginning tonight this new collaboration with your organization, Planet Forward. Tell us a little bit more about this and the project. Well, Planet Forward is meant to hear from people out in the community, citizens, um, scientists, experts, entrepreneurs, the like. They come to us with the ideas, then we look for the best ideas, the ones in particular that focus on energy innovation and invention, and we will highlight those. We'll hi highlight them on planetforward.org on the website mm -hmm. itself, and the best ones we're going to bring to you here to a nightly business report to see, you know, what are the game changers out there? Yeah. What, what really can be happening, and who can tell us things we don't already know? There's the wisdom of crowds and tapping into that, and we saw some of that in that piece just in terms of the comments on the blogs, but also adding videos as well online. Yeah, and we're getting videos from scientists and from students, as I say, and from, from business people who are doing things in some remote place, but now with the, you know, with the magic of a, of a video camera and upload, yep. they can tell the whole world about it. A new way to cover innovation and invention. You can go to our website to uh, upload your ideas, NBR on PBS.org, and just look for the Planet Forward button right there on our homepage. Frank, we're looking forward to this collaboration in the months ahead. Thanks for joining us. Our guest this evening is Frank Sesno with Planet Forward. Thanks, Tom.